Okay. To lead up to that, it's worth noting the following. Okay, we know that representation two is the most, uh, is the, or you, we know because I just told you, and you believe me, that representation two is the most efficient possible representation. Uh, but what's interesting about the code words in representation two? Well, I know the probabilities over here. So what I'm going to write down is uh, in this column, log base two of one over the probability of the message. So, what is that in this case for um, for the C? The probability is one half. One over that probability is two. So, what is log base two of two? One. For this, one over four. One over one over four is four. Log base two of four is two. Uh, 1 over 8, it's 3. 1 over 16, it's 4. 1 over 64, what is it for 1 over 64? 6. six. What are these equal to? Okay. They're equal to the length of the code word. So in other words, um, it seems like that's that's more than just a coincidence. It turns out that the most efficient, if, if you're seeking the most efficient possible representation, you will achieve it if you assign, on average, exactly log base 2 of 1 over p of m uh, bits to each, um, to each message. So we're going to call this quantity self-information. Um, in other words, it's, it's probably better to think of it as if I have a source and I want to represent it efficiently, then this is the number of bits that I should spend encoding each message. So let's, let's take a, a step back and say, okay, what if, um, let's see, how many elements are there here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say they're all equally probable. In this case, what is the self-information of each of these, of each of these messages? Three. So in that case, if I'm arguing that the most efficient possible representation is to assign the a number of bits equal to the self-information, then representation one, it turns out, is optimal. So in other words, if everything, if um,
Okay, so our basic argument is that Now, I've presented a lot of this without justification. We'll get into the proofs uh, later. But for now, we're saying the self-information log 2, 1 over P of M, log 1 over the probability of the message, is the optimal representation length for message M. So if that's true, what the optimal code would have what average length? So this is the fundamental quantity in um, this is the fundamental quantity in source coding. So uh, there does not exist any representation of a uh, uh, of a source that is uniquely decodable and that does better than entropy. So in other words, this is the this is the fewest number of bits you can use on average to uh, to represent a source uniquely and error free. In practice, would you have to take the ceiling of the length? Say again? Uh, so, in, in practice, would you have to take the uh, ceiling of the optimal representation? So, in practice, um, what you're doing is you're encoding very long strings. So, uh, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're encoding messages over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So, the number of bits that you would use would be, let's say, um, The number of bits that you're using is the number of messages times h of n. I guess what I'm saying is uh, if you have a binary alphabet yes. and your probabilities aren't 1 over a power of 2, yes. then you end up having uh, bits are like 1 point something. That's correct. Something. Now, um, the lesson here is that um, Entropy is, is still meaningful without without the ceiling, and the sure. reason is because you can take um, you can uh, it still gives a lower bound. Yes, it still gives a lower bound, and what you can do so, for example, let's say I had this messages A, B, and C or something, and they don't have probabilities that are uh, powers of two. So let's say this has probability uh, nine over ten. 